You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. I said, you take that out before I shit it out. And he did. Oh, right, OK. Well, that's what happens when you bump for the first time, but well done you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What have you got today for us, Mike? Well, today I've got a story about a man that likes to go for dog walks. Oh, OK. Yeah. With his dog? Yeah, with his dog. Clear in the sort of description that, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> On screen. Oh, no, sorry. Dogging. Okay. Got a story about dogging. Is it about you? No. No. OK. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us. The Cud.TV for our website. And on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. Oh, there you go. As names go along the bottom of our screen, we get ready for this week's showbiz with Lee. So the first bit of showbiz news is is is, is weird. Okay. Compared to majority of the showbiz news, it's strange. It's normally strange. So a fashion so design. It's not about share then. No, it's not about share. <laughs> well, I'm dressed like her today. Whoa. Um, whoa. Um, a fashion designer. Excuse me. <coughs> Just had a bit of a bit of in my throat. A fashion designer is suing Lego over a leather jacket worn by a Lego figure of Queer Eyes Anthony. Okay. Okay. So they're being sued for copyright infringement. Sorry, I spat something at you there, Mark. I think you did, something... yeah. A little bit more semen. A bit more, this, yeah. This, this thing becoming a bomb is really just <laughs> onto you. I become a it? dump. Yeah. Um, Lego have created this um, Queer Eye Lego set. Uh -huh. And one of the characters, Anthony, yep. that we can see on the far right of the screen, um, is wearing a leather jacket. He's got his old hair because he's, he's shaved his hair now. Well, they probably, it was probably that's what the look at the time okay. of, of that they made the Lego. So it, the, the leather jacket that's in the, on the figure is actually a, le a leather jacket in real life that he did wear okay. on one of the episodes. But the designer, James Cochannon, is not happy with it because he's like, no... No, you've not. No, don't think you've said it. No, no, no. So there's the real jacket, okay, and then there's the Lego version, which is, you know, it, it's kind of similar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's not happy because they're say, he's saying that they intentionally copied the leather jacket and have not given him any money or any sort of sort of put his name on it. They've intentionally copied something. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's right. They have intentionally copied something. Yeah, but then if that was the case, then shouldn't all of the figures, whatever the clothes the figures are wearing, mm. the designers should be. Mentioned Marks and Spencers, Georgia Asda, two at Super at Sainsbury's, that kind of stuff. They would need, you would need to put all the names on. It's a little bit. It's just a little bit. Hmm? Just pay him. Just pay him. Well, you know. So yeah, he's taking it to court. Okay. And he's saying, you know, I want reimbursing, or or you know, and Lego have like said, do you know what? No, no. They sent him a free set of the Lego. Okay. It's a little bit insulting if you kind of well that's that's my jacket. Well, here's a set for you, uh -huh. um, which roughly costs about ninety nine dollars, about seventy three quid in English money, okay. um, and it's kind of like you know that's all you're getting, hun. That's it. But he's not happy, and he's taking it. He's taking it further, and Lego was saying, really, it'd be an uphill battle for us to to be bothered with this. <laughs> um, so they're not. There's no quote from Anthony saying. I don't think he cares. I'm happy about that. I don't think he cares. Yeah. Aren't people strange, Mike? They are. Mm. Says the man wearing pearls. Pearls before swine. Just going to leave that there. Anyway, Paul Hollywood. Now this is what this is the direct quote. Paul Hollywood has sent fans into a frenzy as he's posted a throwback photograph of himself in his twenties. So the twenties then. The twenties. So, yeah. so Paul Hollywood is fifty-five in in reality, mm -hmm. in real life. It's not that much older than you then. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> there we've got a picture of him. Look at his dusty thumbs, Mike. Looks like he's shooting come out of his thumbs <laughs> into the air. Is that Woo! something that happens at that sort of age, Lee? I don't know. Not I'm not sure. He's, he looks happy about it. He looks quite happy about it. I'd be content of that. So, yeah. <laughs> so he's posted this photograph to his 503,000 followers. Okay. So his brother has put, sent him this photograph of him about 1993, 1992 with no what are you laughing like that for? How old were you in 1993? You don't know, Mike. You don't know how old you know. were. That's how old you are. You can't remember. How... <laughs> no. So look, there's a picture of him at 93. Now, what, what do you think? Is that something that you would do? <laughs> he looks very 90s. It does. It's very gel. 
It's very, it's very of its time. Yeah, yeah. He obviously doesn't know what sun cream is. Well, he's very obviously burnt. on. He's one of those holidays, isn't he, where you but get a burnt. little bit too much sun. Yeah, but I still come back lovely, pristine white when I have <laughs> Wherever you go, yeah. yeah. So the so his fans have taken to social media, kind of to, in a frenzy, a frenzy, frenzy, saying, "Whoa, what a gorgeous man when he was younger. Gorgeous man now." Lots of flicking of beans. Mm. Also, somebody else playing, so handsome, Paul. Then and now you've aged like a fine wine. So there's lots of middle-aged women. Who's like, yeah, or an old double. loaf. Mm, yeah, yeah. But then I thought, what would it be like if we saw what you look like when you was young? So I actually have pictures of me looking young. Have you? Right, and minus the beard, I'd hair, done. Shall we have a look at a picture? Okay. Let's see. Let's see a picture of Mike when he was, if if he was young. I am still young compared to you. You found this photo again. <laughs> I'm never not going to stop using it, Mike. Why are you everything. obsessed with this photo? Yeah. So this would be you. If you, now, did that look like you when you were? Because obviously that's that is a that is the timey wimey app thing. Facey weasey. I've had a stroke. I, no, it's just. What's going on with my eye? Well, it, obviously the bones are not there for them to kind of recreate. <laughs> Youth, so they've just had to fill in where they had to. It looks like to... I've had to str um, So, kind of does look a little bit like me, only I had tint in hair. Okay, like up. That, that's Yeah, so it was very, you know, 90s, to early 2000s oh, hair. Oh, okay. I had up. Okay. Didn't have quaff. Yeah. Shall we have a look at what I would look like if I had a beard? Okay. Shall we see? Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's lob it up and see what people think. I'm not liking it. I don't like it. Do you not? No. I was going to say it. <laughs> It's a bit of a daddy vibe. I don't like that. Like a granddaddy vibe. I don't like it. No? I don't like it, and I don't want it ever shown ever again. It's it's like, you can imagine... It actually ages you, which is impressive. <laughs> Didn't think we'd be able to do that, but yeah. Producers cracking one off right now, this no, very that, second. That's, that's laughter. Oh. Most people don't laugh when they're doing but that. But it sounds like creaking, like old bones creaking together. That's you. Oh, it is me. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, so there, there, there you know. So, right, we've got <laughs> to round things off. Okay. Polish them off. We've got, there's a new film coming, a new LGBTQI film coming this year at it's some point. Called? It's called Fire Island. Now, okay. Fire Island is it's it's going to be a romantic comedy. Okay. But for those of you who don't know, Fire Island is is a place in America on the on the sort of Long Island area of is that kind of like near New York mm. that kind of thing. It's going to be a reputation for being a bit saucy. A bit saucy. Yeah. So, so look at that. Right. That is like a Long Island fire a Fire Island homosexual party. So someone was talking to me about this before, mm. right? Because the producers were going, "What the is he talking about?" And I was like, "Fire Island." <laughs> it's like it's basically like a, a a gay pride event that's just about getting it away. So you that's swimming pool. It's not filled with water, huh? No, it's filled not. Yeah. Oh, it makes a change. It's normally it's normally mm. pee. It's normally pee. It's normally pee. Oh wow! It looks horrific. And yet, at the same time, strangely attractive. Producer Jay just left the building, <laughs> so he's obviously he's on the plane now, yeah. straight over there. Um, so it's going to star Joel Kim Booster and Boam Yang, who people probably won't know because they're kind of sort of um, quite niche to America. They've not really made it over here. I like his arms. You like his arms? Mm. He that is that is that is Kim Booster. Then we've got Boam Yang, and then we've got my favourite uh, Margaret Cho. We love her, and it's inspired by Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Oh. But made gay. Why okay. does it have to be inspired by things? Why can't you not just tell a story about people having it away at a pool party? Well, that's what it is, but they'll probably be wearing corsets. Yeah, but what? Oh, it's inspired by... No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You just wanted to see some attractive American guys stick that in other people's, you know, what's it's... That's porn. You can just get that anywhere. Can't get it anywhere. You can get it on your phones, on your tablets. <laughs> Can't get on the Disney VHSs. Plus. <laughs> VHSs. VHSs and put them in your... Please be kind and rewind. <laughs> in your machines. Um, Please frame. <laughs> so so in, in reality, both of those actors are openly gay. Okay. Um, it, it's about... It's this life-changing story where friends get to know each other. It's Basically, they're going to be friends, aren't they? And then bone each other by the end. Yeah. Um, it's set to who's be really... Who's bottom? I don't know who would be... Mm, judging by the photographs, the second one, I would say, would be the bottom. Not the one with the arms. The second. So I would say he would be bottom. Why? 
I don't know. He just looks sensitive and, you know. Did you say I'm sensitive? Just throwing your whole rationale out the window there, haven't I, really? Are we getting into this? Are we getting into this personal? No. No, let's not. Um, Let's not. So it's going to be released on Hulu in the United States at some point next year. But we don't have Hulu, so it will be a time afterwards Okay, for that. So, yeah, it's all good in the hood. Just said that. (laughs) You really just said that? I did, yeah, yeah. And that is the end of this week's Showbiz News. Um, thanks. Totally welcome, you big nilly bottom. But stick around as next. It's Mike with the buzz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's have him bring us the buzz. <laughs> You take the dog for a walk, don't you, Lee? I do. Yeah, it's not a euphemism for you, though, is it? No. No, physically. It's actually taking a dog for a walk. Yeah. My mum calls that dogging. Your mum calls it dogging? Why? Because she's taking the dog out. So she's dogging. Yeah. She's not in Manchester, though, which has recently been crowned as the dogging capital of the UK. Manchester for? Manchester. <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, so, how many... Dogging hotspots, do you think Liverpool has, for instance? Have a guess. Pick a number out your ass. Play along. Uh, the, uh, t- t- between? Is there a between? Between this? one and a million. Oh, but like 50. 50. Not far off. 82 in Liverpool. Oh, OK. 82. In London, there's 67. OK. In Manchester, there's 131. Basically every street corner. Really? Yeah. Um, so this is after a, a, a site that I mean, I've never heard of. Um, so Dating Roo. Which dating is a Woo. Dating comparison website. Okay. Yeah. Um, has basically done a survey and found that Manchester has got 131 dogging locations across the city. Okay. Yeah. So that's not including all the suburbs. Okay. It's just the city itself. You have dogging bits in suburbs? Yeah. You seem to be an expert, Mike. Yeah. On dogging areas. Did you do this this survey yourself? What, for dogging room or service I only found out about today? Yes. Yeah, no, surprisingly. <laughs> it, it's amazing how I've not done work for a company I've never heard of. Um, yeah, but um, places like Edinburgh have got 62, Newcastle's got 59, um, Lincoln, only 12. Oh. Yeah. Same. But uh, it's. <laughs> Is it like, are they not rated, like, how there, good they are? There is a rating system for them. Oh, it makes a best good dogging times. site. Um, good, good tree cover. Tree cover? Good, good parking, parking base? Yeah. Good gravel? Yeah, a little bit of light, but not too much light. Mm. No police, because it's illegal. Nice nice dog waste bin to put your, your jizzy condoms in afterwards. So, yeah, people were shocked that um, London only came seventh. Well, London's very, very... Um, architectural isn't it so there's not a lot of wide open spaces in london what architecture you know there's lots of buildings and stuff know, it wasn't the word i was going for but no, i can't, can I can't yeah. think of the word that i wanted urban, urban. yes urban. yeah so one would yeah 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 okay well done all you doggers yes over thirty thousand searches for dogging sites happen in manchester i don't get it every month every month people going on google where's good to go dogging Ooh. we're do you... Oh, I don't understand it. You're having sex outside? Yeah, no, I just don't get it. I don't get the... Well, I heard you don't get it, but that's a conversation for you and your partner. Because <laughs> there's the doggers, uh-huh. as in the ones that are in the sex act. Uh-huh. And then called in for granted. The doggies that are watching it. Okay. Pulling on the badge. Okay. Or flicking a bean. Flicking the bean or pulling the badge. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, shall we move on from doggy? <laughs> Please. Okay, uh, this is a bit of a sciencey story about dolphins. I like dolphins. You like dolphins? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're like... gay sharks. Did you know that? They're not gay sharks. Because <laughs> sharks are types of fish and dolphins are mammals. You do you, Mike, and I'll do me. Well, dolphins can do dolphins too. They can. Oh! Yes. Um, as they have found, scientists have found out that dolphins have functional clitorises. Uh, they're using lesbian sex. 
Go dolphins! So, yes. Go. So to all those people going, oh, we can't find gays everywhere. Dolphins have got <laughs> face. Then sorry, I know we're off camera, <laughs> but come on. <laughs> They have a clitoris that's similar you to. Just over the word clitoris. I did like, stutter. You? It's the first time I've been for you. <laughs> <Stuffed> <laughs> over <laughs> clitoris. <laughs> it was like a penguin <laughs> um, on dolphins. <laughs> Do penguins have clitorises? I don't know. I'm just not. wondering. Just that. <laughs> let's, let's concentrate on dolphins. <laughs> so research have analysed the genitals of eleven female bottlenose dolphins. They've analysed the genitals. Yeah. How else should you find out if they've got a clitoris or not? What do they do? Do they take them out of the water and like go, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, they can leave them in the water. And then chuck them back. Like, or what, what happens if I do this? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, okay, a clitoris. <laughs> Whoa, that's a cock. Um, <laughs> No, or they used female dolphins. Do they go in the water and just put goggles on and like just swim underneath them? Go in. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> and no, okay, how on it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they basically they've they've seen some um has been dolphins at it. And they've got no they, they stimulate each other in the clitoral region too. If it feels notice. good, who are we to judge? Exactly. So I thought it was great news. Mmm. Yeah. Who hasn't been fingering dolphins is my question. <laughs> dolphins are quite um male dolphins mm -hmm. are quite sexually aggressive. They are. Mm. So maybe they'd do lesbian sex for some some soft, lovely time. I'm going to Florida for my holiday this year. Oh yeah. Yeah, Sea World. Covered in tuna fish paste. I'm just going to jump in. Throw me to the dolphins. I don't care whether they're lesbians or straight. Dolphins, just do it. Just f me, dolphin. <laughs> And if you want to interact with us on social media, and by us I mean definitely not the dolphin <laughs> it's at the Cud TV. And that brings us on to our story of the week. This is a food related item, Lee. Okay. Okay. Now, in your cupboard, I have got you a present that we can both share and try. <sighs> now, the side there wasn't because I've got him something in his cupboard, it's the fact he has to turn around and open his cupboard. Mm. Carefully, carefully. We've got some lovely cheese. You like cheese, don't you, Lee? Yeah, it's all right. Do I take a little bit of the cheese? What kind of cheese is it, Mike? It's cheese. What kind? It's cheese. Because knowing you, it'll be made out of, like, cat piss or something it's not, like that. It's not made from cat piss. It's made from cow's milk. OK, what do I do? Scoop it onto a cracker? Yeah, scoop a little bit. Is this brie? On. It's, it's brie adjacent. It's not real cheese, is it? It is real cheese. It's come from a cow. Okay, right, I've got some on the end of the crack. Okay, so cheers. Cheers. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, Chezu Maru is the world's most dangerous cheese. Um, as when it's made, um, it's infested with um, the eggs of maggots and they're allowed to be alive in the cheese. So as you're eating it, you're actually eating live maggots. There you are. What? Is this maggot cheese? Does it taste like maggot cheese to you? I've never tasted maggot cheese before. Do you have now? Because <laughs> if you look really closely, you can see them moving in the cheese. Oh. <laughs> it's been nice. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> If you look closely, you can see the move. There's no, that's just ordinary. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to afford maggot cheese. It's actually illegal to buy. You can't buy the cheese itself. Why would you want cheese with maggots in it? So, officially, because it is one of the most delicious cheeses. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Um, it's never had a hot baby bell. <laughs> <laughs> so, the flies infest the cheese, leaving behind the larvae, and that gives the cheese a distinct taste and texture. During the of shit to four months, um, it's removed from the dark room as enjoyed by with being infested by thousands of maggots. No, oh. and it's actually alive as you're eating it. That's disgusting. Hmm. But apparently, it's a very, very, a very tasty cheese. No, it's not. They're just saying that because they want people to buy it. Well, no, it's illegal to sell it. They can't. You can't buy it. What's the point of it then? They can. You can make it yourself. I don't want and to. eat it. I don't want to. It's like. In Sweden, they get the they get the shark meat, don't they? The shark meat, and then they pee on it, 
and then they bury it in the sand. No, because that's a different country. They bury it in the in the in the snow and ice, and it ferments, and okay. then they eat it. Okay. Okay. Meat. Are you sure that wasn't just something you watched on porn? No, it genuinely is. Wait. Shark meat. The words just just came out of your mouth. Better than fing a dolphin. You want to be ganged by dolphins. Oh! <laughs> Can we wipe this and just start again? You want to wipe it? Or wipe down a dolphin now? <laughs> Clear the tapes. Clear the decks. <laughs> Do you not enjoy the cheese then? No, I don't. I don't. I'm, to be fair, I'm not keen on that brie stuff anyway. Why? It's a bit gooey. It's an oozy cheese. Mm, you're supposed to eat it hot, aren't you? I like it with a bit of beef. <laughs> like to dunk a bit of beef, you don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. So, any other? So you said something about hot baby bells. Mm. It's nice to hold it in your hand. Hot right. cheese. No, the baby bell. Okay. Till it warms, till it becomes room temperature. Okay. And then when you eat it, it's, it's kind of, it's not rubbery. It's kind of goes nice and soft. So you're supposed to eat cheese at room temperature. Yeah, but baby bells come from the fridge, don't they? But that's all from the buzz this week. Thanks, Mike. Don't you cheese shame me ever. No, I was dolphin shaming you for wanting to f*** a dolphin. I, said, I didn't say f*** make love. That's different. Aggressive. What's, di what's the difference between making love and a f Dinner and a douche. Oh dear. Stick around if you want to, because coming up next, we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Faster Hind, and this one is for both of us. Not, neither of us is going off. Going off? Well, I'm going off. Ooh, rancid. Um, what, what, what are we doing, Mike? What are we doing? Who are we? Where are we? What's going on? Game of the Week. The rules for this are quite simple. I have a box of magical questions in front of me. I'm going to read them out to you, and it will be your fastest finger first. Okay, so let's test your buzzers, and let's ask some questions. Test the buzzer Lead, first. Test your buzzer first. <laughs> Fantastic. And Mike? Horrendous. I love it. So, first question I am going to choose from Geography and Nature. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is an interesting choice of category. And I don't actually know the answer to this one. So, your guess is as good as mine, guys. Which animals were led out of town by the Pied Piper of yeah. Melon? No! <laughs> I pressed first! But who, who, who? I don't know who pressed first. I was trying to read the last word on this card and I didn't understand it. Lee. Rats. Absolutely rats. Yes, fantastic. Well done. Um, okay. What, a <laughs> what about the arts and music? Who's, whose specialist subject is the arts and music? I feel like it might be Mike's subject. Well, it's definitely not Lee. Look what he's wearing. So, which mythological British king was renowned for his... <laughs> Mike. Arthur. No. He was renowned for his love of music, food and tobacco. Lee. Bacchus. No, it was old King Cole. Oh. Apparently, apparently he was a merry old soul as well. Who would have thought that? And a merry old soul was he. Oh, I always thought it was an arsehole he was. Oh. I think my buzz is a bit You wonky. picked that one as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a horrendous buzzer. Ooh. Okay, here's one. Science and invention. Is anyone a scientist here? I feel like... No. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Mike does that science that is every single week, and th this is probably more... No. I, yeah, I don't even understand this question, guys. I can't lie to you. Um, which metal has an atomic number of 47? Lee. Steel. No, <laughs> Mike, alloy. you guess. <laughs> All right. Geek. Yes, Mike. Aluminium. No, you're all wrong. It's silver. At least I had a metal that wasn't on the atomic um, periodic table. <laughs> no, just stop. Just, just, can we just... Okay, sports and pastimes. Which former Australian cricket captain had the moniker Captain Grumpy? And no, he wasn't called Monica. Captain Grumpy. Lee. Graham Gooch. <laughs> you said Gooch. 
<laughs> What's scary about that is not the fact that the name is Graeme Gooch, it's the fact it's actually a cricketer. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine going through life with the name Gooch? I don't. Was it, was it right? Was it Shane Warne? It was neither of them. It was somebody called Alan Border. Uh, oh. Alan Border. So not Mr Gooch. Uh, like we knew. But no. we need to find Mr Gooch and get Mr Gooch on here. Did he, Alan Border? Border. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, let's have a fun one. Let's have entertainment and celebrity. So... In which country were the acting brothers Luke, Chris, and Liam Hemsworth born? <laughs> Lee! Australia. Yes, we've got one. Fantastic. That was. <laughs> I feel Slower. like I just got Please. really excited Slower. and neither of you got excited with us. You you're on you should have been on that. I would have been on that. Because you're often cracking one off to them three, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I don't care about where they're from. Entertainment and celebrity again. Which American pop icon starred in the 2013 Muppets Holiday Spectacular? What was the question? That was the question. Lee? Cher. No. What was the question again? Which American pop icon starred in the 2013 Muppets Holiday Spectacular? Mike? Miley Cyrus. No, oh my God, it was Lady Gaga. Even oh. I've seen this as well, and I've not seen any of these things before. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Waiting on my tits now. Maybe it's that chair that makes people angry. It possibly is. I thought I was just having void rage or something. It's but infused no, it's, with, it's with, you two. With the rage. Oh, okay. Because every time you sit over there, you get angry. I know. And then blame me. Um, Ruth, Anita, Bonnie and June were the what sisters in the 70s and 80s? Sorry, I, I was talking. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Say no, Shane. <laughs> I was no, talking. No, I you can't get remember. one shot like JLS. You get one shot at this. I, I can't. I don't know the question. I didn't hear it. Okay, no. so Ruth, Anita, Bonnie and June were the what sisters? My... Pointer. Yes, pointing. Pointing. Yeah. Pointer sisters. You yeah. got a question sure? about showbiz? I did, yeah. God. Because you were busy gassing and talking about Yeah. Oh, guff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Semen mainly. Okay, so on the subject of semen, if we're going to talk about semen, let's get a semeny question going on. Let's go for nature. Here we it go. It tastes good. Does it? No. Does it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Never does for me. Always tastes a bit like. You know when you have like a cheap cheeseburger? You know you go on a night out, yeah, and you go to McTucky's at the end of your night and you get a cheeseburger and it's got that like nasty mayo on it? I don't Always have a bit mayo. like that. And I don't have mayo because, yeah. It looks like semen. Are you cum buns? So what, what was that, Lee? You were eating cum buns. On which river does Mississippi, with all the S's and all the I's, state capital Jackson stand? Uh, no, Jackson's. Yes, Mike? The Mississippi River. No. I'll give you a clue. We, we get one clue on this one because I would never have guessed this in a trillion years. It's all over Lee's jacket. <laughs> Lee? <laughs> Dandruff! <laughs> it is white. I will... Oh. Yes, the it's Pearl the Pearl River. River. It is the Pearl River. Congratulations. <laughs> they're not pearls, they're plastic. <laughs> I'm just glad neither of you said what, what I was thinking was all over his jacket. Bogies. Okay, entertainment and celebrity. Michael Stipe was the lead singer of which American group? Lee? R.E.M. Yes, we've got one. Fantastic, named after the Ariana Grande song, I believe. <laughs> what? Ariana oh, Grande's got a song called R.E.M. Right, R.E.M. were out in the 1990s, before Ariana Grande was born. All right, Grandad, stop showing your age. All right. Lee's older than me. Okay, so I'm science and invention. Down, sorry. <laughs> what was that? Just taking Lee down with me because he's older than me, significantly. Ooh, I like this one. So, triskaidekaphobia is a fear of what? <laughs> Mike? Lee's jacket. Um, <laughs> no, I can't accept that as an answer, I'm afraid. <laughs> Is it small animals? Can you be a bit more precise with that, Lee? What do you mean by small animals? No, like, no, do you no. mean like hamsters or do like you mean... rodents? No, no, it's oh. not. It's a phobia of the number thirteen. Oh, so, nothing to do with rodents. Yeah, like thirteen little All rats in, in, a, in a hideous plastic jacket, scuttling up your drain pipe at night. You know. Like... It's getting very aggressive, isn't it? That chair. I'm on my man period. Leave me alone. Okay, you're definitely going to get this one, you two. You'd, one of you must get this correct. The Phones For You Arena is a popular boxing venue in which... Mike? Manchester. It is, yes, but does the Phones For You Arena even still exist? No, it doesn't. How old are these questions? Went, phones For You went out of business in 2014, 2015. How old are these questions? Where oh, did well. these questions come from? Some moth-eaten charity shop. Oh, yes. lovely. I hope they've been washed. 
So, so our research assistant isn't very good, Jay. Right. Um, and finds things from very, very old, old places. Like Lee's house. I'm, I'm aware that a lot of the set decorations come from charity shops. I'm hoping that nobody died in this jacket. So... I... No, no, no. That was, that's new. That's no, new. Uh, no. Not yet. Yeah. Not <laughs> <laughs> the only time. thing to die in that jacket, Jay, is your career in about four months. <laughs> <laughs> what was the surname of the American poet Ezra, born in 1885? American poets called Ezra. I like the name Ezra. Lee. Words. Ezra words. Ezra, Ezra words. No. Mike, would you like to guess on Ezra's surname? You have to give him a clue. Oh, where's my clue? Um, so this clue has two meanings. It could be the currency of the United Kingdom or it could be what you're hoping to do later. Pounded. Yes. Well, it's Ezra Pound, but oh, yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. Cool, that was a success. Cool. Um, let's do a... I think we've got, we've got time for one more. Okay. Tiebreaker. A tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. You're both... Doing tying. so well. Mm. You're both doing fabulously. Okay, final question. It's the tiebreaker. This determines which one of you is going to go home with dignity and which one of you isn't. Oh, well, I've already lost things. I never go home with dignity. You lost dignity the minute you walked through this door this morning, let's be real. Um, okay, so which Rolling Stones track was their first number one hit single in the USA? <coughs> Lee. Brown Sugar. No. Oh. no it's, <laughs> it wasn't Brown Sugar. Where's my clue? Well, I, 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 I don't even know because I don't know the song. I can't sing it for you. What's the answer say? Well, it starts with an S and ends in Atisfaction. <coughs> yes. Satisfaction? Yes. What did you do? That wasn't even a... <laughs> it's that a was clue. basically just telling him the answer. No, because it could have been Satisfaction or No, it couldn't have been. It Rubbish. could have been about a dodgy bed salesman called Mr. Satisfaction. Absolute actually, crap. Though. Less of your cheek. What a load of... What a load right. of shit. Well, this has been an absolute joke. It's gone on for too long now. Um, yeah, we've got... Who's the real... Who's the winner? Do we have a think, winner? I don't think anyone wins in this show. Nobody wins. <sighs> Nobody wins. After the break, it's that science that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's that part of the show that we call that science that is. That science that is. So, slightly outside of the, the realm of science, how do you feel about the power of crystals, Lee? The power of what? Crystals. Custard? Crystals. Crystals? Sorry. Sorry, dear. Literally, I think I'm aging about one, about a decade a second, losing control of my bowels, can't hear anything. Um, crystals, power of crystals, they compel me. They do? Good. Because mm. what we're going to do today is we're going to use the power of crystals to make you feel better about everything. Oh. Okay. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're going to make icy crystals. Ooh. Very small ones. Oh, icy crystals. Now, we need to create a, a little bit of a medium in which to create these icy crystals, though. So you Amazing. Should, you should have three red cups. I do. Okay. One, one of which has got a thick white liquid in. It does. Right. Which looks a little bit splooji. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a thinner white liquid that's a little bit, you know, second shots. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got a white granulated powdery thing. Okay. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to mix your powdery thing into your thick white liquid. The very thickest one? The very thickest one. Okay. So I'm going to add everything to the thickest one. Okay. Just mix it together? Just mix it together. Okay. Should be quite a quick mix for you. Mm-hmm. And then slowly add the thinner white liquid. Okay. A little bit at a time. Till it all combines into one fluid. Should be quite quick for you. Ooh. You okay? Yeah, a, a, bit, just a bit at a time. Let me know when you're combined. I'm not right. Well, I'm gone. You take your time, Lee. It's fine. Sorry. I didn't know, I didn't know there was a rush. Right, yeah, I've done it. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you should have some Ziploc bags. 
a large one and a smaller one. I do. You want to put half of your newly combined fluid in the smaller bag. About half of it. May I lick the spoon? And um, once you've once you've finished, yes, you may. So half of the about half of the fluid. Okay. Okay, and then zip your ziplock bag up. It is done. Okay. Now, in your larger ziplock bag, you need to put some ice. But where is the ice? Mike? It's underneath your table. Oh, it appeared. How much ice? I just need to break some of mine up, sorry. Um, you need quite a lot. There's a, it's, it's in a massive, massive piece. Okay. So once you've got a fair amount of ice in your bag, let me know. Oh! Is that enough ice? That's enough for now. You will need some more in a moment. Okay. Now, in your bowl, you have some white. You have some white crystally stuff. Yeah. This is salt. Oh. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the ice colder. Oh. Now, if you just put that spoon in your your salt, you're going to be very upset later on. No, I've had. Okay. So just pop in your salt on top of the ice. All of the salt. All of the salt. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then pop in your other zip, your smaller ziplock bag. Mm-hmm. And then add more ice to the more bag. More ice. More ice to the big bag. Because what the salt does, it actually ha lowers the temperature of the ice. Oh. I'll just... Uh... Okay. Now, once you've got good amount of ice in. Yeah, so your, your little bag should have all of its liquid surrounded by ice. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, it's, I'm going to fucking die here. There's like water going all over the place. Okay. Oh no! Okay, let me see where you're up to with this ice. Okay, that should be enough. Now zip your ziplock bag up. Mm-hmm. Okay, then wrap it in the towel that I've given you. Oh, let me just remove this huge chunk of... of ice. Ice. Wrap the towel up. Wrap it round the... T wrap, it, wrap it up in the towel. Like it's a little baby. Like a little baby. Like a little baby. Right, and for the people at home, I'll, I'll show them what's happening in the middle. But you can wrap yours up fully. I've got air in it. That's okay, you need a bit of air. Okay, and then you're going to shake it. Like a baby. Keep shaking it. Shake my baby. Shake the baby, that's it. Okay. Oh, keep it. Okay. And he's <laughs> So we can stop now. So, what that is, Lee, is that's cardiovascular exercise. So it's God! Your, your blood I wondered what that strange pulpating in my chest right. was. And that, that, that exercise is what I was talking about. So yeah, well done. <sighs> That's right. So, do you want to see what we've created? Yes. Okay, so if you carefully undo your big bag and remove your small bag. Oh. Oh. <gasps> ice cream. <laughs> we have got in our little baggie. Be very careful not to get any outside liquid on the inside because the last thing you want to do is get a salty ice cream. You take your, take your spoon that you didn't put in the salt before. I'm gonna wipe it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. just remove some of the ice cream. Where do I put it? In my mouth? In the bowl. You've, oh. got, a, you've got a bowl there that's... <coughs> that is unsalted. It doesn't survive very long in the hot studio lights. <gasps> oh, 
It's proper ice cream. Proper ice cream. Because what's happened there is it's the the ice crystals have formed inside the fat of the ice cream. And I've also given you a little pot of jelly. Just sucking, just sucking the ice cream. So I, I'm going to pop my, I'm going to pop some jelly in mine as well because I like jelly and ice cream. But yeah, I'm just going to eat the ice cream. Mm. Well, Mike, I think you have redeemed yourself. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to lie. Up yeah. until now, mm -hmm. I've been massively disappointed <laughs> in that science. That is, have you? But, Oh, you could have. It's good, ain't it? I'm liking it. So if you're ever short of ice cream, you can now know how to make it yourself. I do. Yeah. Well, I've lost you now, haven't I? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to get no interaction from you whatsoever. Would you like to know the ingredients that you've mixed together? No, I'm quite happy just eating it. Do you think the people at home would be interested in finding out what's in it? So it's it's condensed milk, double cream, and sugar. Again, 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 <laughs> again. So you know how I said you use half of your liquid from before? Mm-hmm. Have you got half of your liquid left? Yeah. There you are, off you pop. Oh, I don't want to do all that shaking again. What do you think of your jelly? Oh, I haven't tried the jelly. I just bought special jelly for you as well. Mm. So while cherry I, break I, well. I, it mm. was cherry break well, and I'm drinking my cream, and that's science, that is. That's science, that is. Not gonna lie. Uh -huh. I'm into this. I'm gonna lick that table in a minute. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't already, to be fair. Mm. What have you done with the leftover liquid? I poured it in the jelly. <laughs> is that jelly any good? Because I would have mm. liked to have tried that. Bakewell tart. Yeah, it sounded delicious. It did, but it's mine, Mike, so you can't have any. It's like that, is it? Mmm. <laughs> anyway, do I have to do anything, say anything, be anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you appreciate that science that is now? Only that one, not any of the others. Right, but as a concept of that science that is, mm -hmm. I've done what you asked. I didn't care that it was science. Right. I was only interested in the fact that I could eat something at the end of it. Okay. Which is generally where you need to aim it. Okay. For future. But you know. Anyway, are you going to have a chat while I finish this? <laughs> That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course on YouTube and podcast, just search for Chewing The Could. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Appreciate that. I'm, I might as well just sit here talking to myself. Okay.